Well, hi guys, welcome back to Linda's Pantry. And today I'm super excited to bring you along for a little video. We're gonna do mostly chatting, but some canning because we're talking about preparedness. I am part of, and you saw that probably in the thumbnail, I am part of the 30 days of preparedness. And I'm so thankful. Thank you, Michelle, for asking me to be a part of this this year. This is a great 30 days because you're going to get videos from people that have different aspects of preparing for what may come your way, whether it's a job loss, um, you've got extra people in your house, you know, you, financially you're not prepared or you have an emergency come up or a natural disaster, you always want to be prepared for whatever comes your way. So National Preparedness Month is here and I'm thankful to be a part of this. So I want to just say first off, thank you because we have a great prize package and I want, everything is going to be listed down below, but I want to say thank you to Avid Armor, which is giving away a chamber vac system, a starter pack. Oh my gosh. Like that's my dream chamber vac. I, I really need one, but it's on the horizon. Um, and that is going to, that's going to be given away. That's the first place prize. And these prizes are given away by your comment. So leaving a comment, asking questions, being part of the conversation, actually creating a conversation, not just a smiley face, will get you put into the random picker drawing. They're going to pick one day out of the month. Whosoever video it's on will then, they will pick the, um, pick the prize winner. That's first prize. Second prize is a signed copy of 100 Days to Preparedness by Lisa Sutton over at Sutton's Days. She was generous enough to give us a signed copy of that. So, and third prize, and thank you, thank you, um, Michelle and her husband are giving away a $100 Amazon gift card. So I've got a list of all the channels that are participating in the um, collaboration. Whoops, sorry about that. And I've got beeping going on, of course. Um, the finale and the grand, grand prize drawings will be a live on Tuesday, October 1st at 4 p.m. Pacific time. So that's when you'll find out who won everything. And you're going to be all the way through the month by then. So Michelle will have a playlist for you on her channel. Today, I'm talking about food uh, preparedness, being pantry preparedness, having your pantry well stocked um, for the year mainly is why I do it. But you know, you you prep ahead. You're gardening and you're putting away all the food, and you're when you're shopping, you're shopping on sale, and you actually are stocking your pantry. So no matter what happens, you're eating at the best prices, at the best quality, and the best of everything you can put on your family's table not just my family though, you know, sometimes we prepare and we have plenty in case there's an emergency of another family member or maybe a neighbor needs help or you need to cook some meals for a neighbor. You've already got it stocked in your pantry. Today I'm stocking my pantry with blackberry syrup. And I apologize because I already put the blackberries, the sugar and the lemon juice in here because my microphone was not on <laughs> and I didn't see it until it was too late. So we're going to get this on the stove. This is also, I'll be using four jars lids uh, as always. They're the best. And this, I'm going to send this note home because in 2020, you couldn't get canning lids. Nobody saw that coming. I had a whole tote of lids that I'd bought. You know, every time I went to Walmart, I'd buy a thing of lids. And so I was fully stocked, but some people were not. And you could not get any at a decent price. And then they were terrible. So if your lid doesn't seal and your product is wasted, you've done nothing for your food pantry preparedness, right? So I do want to say I just watched Mouse Toes. She's part of this collab collaboration and hers was on water catchment and my husband and I are going to be doing that very, very soon. So um, it was really neat to see her water catchment system 
and you'd think where they lived, they wouldn't need it, but wow, that was an eye opener. Anyway, so don't be sure and go down and look at all the channels and watch all their videos. Michelle will have a playlist. So we're gonna get this blackberry syrup going and I'm doing this safety first always because, you know, I wanna be safe, I want my family safe. And this blackberry liqueur syrup calls for raspberry liqueur, a cambord or other raspberry liqueur. I'm not doing that. I'm just doing blackberry syrup for the pantry for waffles and pancakes and Dutch babies and you name it, right? And maybe some ice cream. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to get this on the stove and we'll talk some more because I like to stock all the areas of my pantry, my freezer, my dry goods, my canning stuff. Uh, you, you need to stock all of it. And that includes other things. So I kind of consider not just food security, but uh, household security. Does that make sense? So I'm also stocking up cleaning products and paper products and all that stuff whenever possible. So let's get to the stove and we'll chat a little bit more. Hey guys, now we are blackberry picking. Oh my gosh, look at these gorgeous blackberries. And these, these are on a three leaf variety. Um, so the leaves are, um, let's see, a three leaf pattern. So you can see one, two, three, where over there we've got, over here, we've got a five leaf pattern. And these berries tend to be sweeter, um, but we're gonna add sugar. So I've got, that's my, well, today that's my first tub, which holds about four cups. And then um, I've got mm, double that in the house already to take home. And we're just gonna continue picking blackberries. And I'll, as soon as I'm done, I'm gonna make you some jam. Okay, so let's get to getting as many of these berries as we can. Cause why? Cause they're free. This is how I prep for free. So while I'm cooking this down and I was thinking about this, you know, um, we put back for the next year. These are pickles that I did last year. These are absolutely delicious. They're still crispy and delicious. These were the horseradish and garlic ones. So I put those up, but I didn't have to worry about buying pickles all year. This is my last jar. And I'm, I'm so, I just feel like, and now it's time to do them, them again. But as far as food security goes, if you are stocking your shelves and making sure you have what you need to prepare a meal, like Thrive's Instant Milk. And let me just tell you, this is one of the best. It's as close to 2% milk that I have come across. And it actually, I make up a quart shake it up in the jar. It's there all week. I don't even have to buy milk. And I've got to get back in the habit of doing that because it really is handy to have this on hand. And this is, it's got a long shelf life. Um, I can take this to work and mix it up and have milk for cereal. If I get hungry and I need something to eat, I've always got cereal in my locker or some raisin bran. Um, you know, having freeze-dried vegetables and meat on the shelf. It just makes sense. It makes sense to have this as an alternative to canned meat or frozen meat because like on this, I, if I forgot to make or pull anything out of the freezer, I have what I need right here and I can make tacos, I can make, um, you know, a hamburger gravy, I can make if this is sausage i can make a sausage gravy and biscuits because i have everything my berries are cooking down i'm getting ready to put them through the food mill i'm going to turn that off because it can't be quite that hot but i have the berries the sugar and the lemon juice is in there and like i said i'm following this um, steam canner has my jars and my lids in there so oh, i'm going to turn that off because it's nice and hot they're now sterile even though they don't need to be, but <clears throat> so 
and the freezers are full. Not to mention, you should be stocking alternative ways to cook, whether that be on a barbecue, a camp stove. I've got several options available to myself. So a cook or a wood stove. Um, if you've got a wood stove, you can cook anything you need to. Um, you can cook on the barbecue if you know if if things let's say your electricity went out for whatever you have power outages um you've got a way to that's also part of the pantry um preparedness in my opinion is to make sure that you have fuel to cook the food and water you're going to need water for this sort of stuff or any dehydrated stuff that you might have i'm getting ready to do sun-dried tomatoes and um, if you dehydrate the tomatoes and you want them to reconstitute for sauces or anything like that, you're going to need water. Um, you're going to need water for the instant milk. So you definitely need to be stocking up on water for your pantry preparedness. And then kind of think about the menu that your family likes. Don't stock spam if you don't like spam. <laughs> don't stock, you know... Um, be on a sausage if you're never going to eat one <laughs> it doesn't make any sense oh, so only you know put the things back that you really will eat but you want to have a way to cook them no matter what and a way to store them safely that's the other thing and i'm going to take you out and show you how i store my home can stuff as well as the thrive thrive can be stored you just want to keep this sort of stuff in a cool you know climate you don't want it to be extremely hot but it has a really long shelf life and if you live in a humid climate once you open this you're gonna need to make sure it stays airtight because it will start to pull moisture out of the air and rehydrate so let's go out and I'll show you what my canned stuff how I store my canned stuff right now that may change so stay tuned. Okay, so this is part of my home canned food storage. And these, because we live in an earthquake area, I feel really good about having them in jar boxes. And some of these are getting a little bit. We've got meat and beans. It keeps your jars clean. Not everybody has access to these. These are not inexpensive. These jar boxes, I would like to have more, but um, we are, I'm just, honestly, I think I've got enough. So I've got canning lids, lids, um, the all the jar boxes. I've got my Thrive over there, my paper goods. Um, we've already started moving some stuff, but I, and all your canning equipment, you want to try to keep that in one area. If that makes sense to you, maybe it doesn't make sense to you, but I do have this. You can do this in a garage. I've been doing this for six years now. And I, you know, once in a while you'll have a jar that loses a seal, but that's, you know, the lids bad, not, um, storage bad. Uh, I, believe I might change my system. I like having the jars organized by what's in them. Um, but that's, that's in the future here. I also keep these gamma seal containers. That's my, that is rice, beans, jasmine rice, beans, flour sugar so you've got all that that's pizza flour you've got extra stuff that you need and i really feel like i've got everything i need to cook whatever i need to okay so back to the canning um i am <laughs> right now i cook these berries down and they're they're hot as you can see the steam coming off and I want to I want to get a lot of the seeds out. I don't want a lot of seeds in my my syrup, so I'm going to get those out. 
And this is something that you can do after work. I picked these berries this weekend and I'm doing it after work. So yay for me, right? And if, if I didn't have time, I'd do what I did with the other batches of blackberries. I put them in the freezer. And they will be good for jam and jelly later when I have time to can. And that's part of the whole thing. You don't have to do everything one day at all. So I am getting everything I can out of here. I don't want to, I don't want to put juice that doesn't need to be in there, in there, but it looks like I'm going to anyways. <laughs> Ooh, look at all that. Beautiful. Delicious. Let me know in the comment section if you do blackberry syrup because it's divine. Okay, now I'm going to do a little bit of a crazy swap here because I need it. I need it over here. Literally, I don't even care if my spoon's in there. And I'm just going to get the seeds out of these berries as much as possible. And there you go. <laughs> And then we'll bring it back to a boil and add our pectin, but it's not going to set like jam. So it doesn't have enough sugar to set like jam. But we're all good. Okay. And look at all that beautiful juice. Okay. I'll be back when we're so done. So I got my berries all run through the food mill. 99% of the seeds are out of there. I want a little texture of pulp. So... That's why I do it like that. The recipe doesn't even have you do that. Um, pectin. Let's talk about pectin. You, oh, you know what? I, hold on, I'm gonna grab something really quick. You have different options with pectin and I wanna, I wanna send it home. If you're gonna be canning jams and jellies and all those things and you need pectin, which jam you don't just cook it till it jams but for something like this it does require a little bit you could thicken it as soon as you open the jar with some cornstarch you cannot can with cornstarch so you don't want to go there um, but pomona's pectin you can buy this in bulk i'll have a link down in the description this liquid pectin is expensive now and this recipe is going to take two <laughs> okay and, but if you can find it at the end of the season on sale, that's when you stock up for the following year. Powdered pectin, you can buy it in bulk. That's also part of your preparedness pantry. You want to make sure that everything you're going to need to prepare, can, preserve, all those tools are in place. So when it does happen and you have no choice but to do it, then you've got it or that it's time to do it. You don't have to stop everything you're doing and go, I have to go to the store. I don't have any pectin. I have to go buy lids. I don't have any lids. I don't have any jars. What are we, what are we going to do? So now I'm going to stir in because it is up to a boil. I'm going to stir in my pectin, but I wanted to talk about that. So it's not just the, th the fruit we need for the canning, but it's also the pectin we need for the canning so here we go adding liquid pectin um i really i like pomona's pectin i'm gonna have to look on their website and see if they have a syrup recipe that's the one website i did not look if they have syrups on there or not and so like I said, if, if you didn't have this or you don't want to add this because it is expensive, I won't be buying liquid pectin anymore. I will be replacing it either doing the, okay, I got to bring this back up to a boil for one full minute and then it's ready to jar up. But literally I'm not going to buy that again. It's pretty expensive. Now a box of two is like $8 something. It's 
ridiculous. This uh, ball recipe calls for three half pint jars. I don't have all afternoon to do three jars, but if you only have a few berries and that's what you've got, then there you go. I had plenty of berries to do double that. And like I said, if your syrup is not thick enough when you open it, you just heat it up and add a little cornstarch to it. I need a boil here. And everything is sterile in here and ready to go. The hot jars, hot, everything is ready. So we're going to be good to go. So answer me this. Do you can? Do you put away in your freezer? Do you shop sales ads? Make sure you get the best deal possible. Buy your meat in bulk. What do you do to prepare your pantry for whatever life brings your way? I'm, I'm just curious, so if you'll leave me a comment and let me know, that would be amazing. Okay, we're just about ready to jar this up. It's back to a rolling boil. I really can't stir it down. So we're going to give that one minute and we're good. We'll be jarring it up. <laughs> okay, here we go. Hot jars. Hot jars. And it's already a little syrupy, I can tell. The viscosity of it is pretty, it's nice and thick. It's not going to gel up like gel, jelly, but it is nice. It's got a nice viscosity. And let's say it's set up too much. What can you do? Oh, look, this four jars has a measurement on the, so you can see a quarter of an inch. Yay. And I'm going to hot jars. Hot, hot, hot. Be very careful. And we're going to, a quarter of an inch of headspace. And there is the, I don't know if you can see, this is a four jars funnel. It's got the measurements right there. So you can see through the jar. We want to wipe the rim just real careful. I already inspected these lids and jars and everything for any imperfections that might be there. Four jars does ask you to heat your lids. So I do. I put them right in the steam canner just like that. Just like I said. Fingertip tight. And that's really all I can do because it's hot. Super hot. Hot blackberry syrup. Ooh, for my 30 days of preparedness, I am going to be doing something all month to keep up with what I'm doing for my pantry and my household in general. So firewood, you need firewood, right? You got to get firewood stocked up. You've got to get prepared for, you know, if you need tires on your car or you've got to have something worked on to make it through winter, rainy, snowy, whatever you've got, weather kind of in climate and weather. And we're going to rinse and repeat, wipe the rim, and give us a nice four jars lid. Place that on center. On center. Yep. This ring doesn't want to doesn't want to thread for me, so we'll try now. Fingertip. And into the canner. These are going to process in the steam canner or a water bath canner for 10 minutes once it either comes to a rolling boil or your steam canner has come up to the zone for your altitude that it needs. And that's super simple, right? So, all right. Here we go. We're just going to rinse and repeat this whole process and I'll be back. Okay, so now I'm waiting for my steam canner to come up to uh, the green zone for my area. I have five jars in there, five eight ounce jars. It should have made six, but it's just below. So we're going to use this syrup for French toast or something delicious this weekend. 
and or this week or maybe some vanilla ice cream we do have some of that in the freezer too um i do want to touch base with uh, as far as stocking what you'll use you also have to rotate you can't just stock up and never rotate through that you've got to rotate through and every single year and usually twice a year i go through all of my home can stuff and find out what i've got a three-year window on most of it jams jellies um pie fillings one year they start losing their color a little bit and like the pie fillings aren't, aren't a set that kind of thing so i try to get through them in one year but um like v8 bloody mary mix vegetables meats all of that can i'm i'm okay with three years um anything past that though then i start going okay i gotta get this out of here so i really try to rotate through it doesn't matter if it's home can stuff uh freeze-dried stuff dehydrated stuff or something you've purchased at the grocery store you need to rotate it and keep it moving through your system which i know you guys have all heard this before so um this is going to be a minute it's got a can once like i said once it comes to the green zone it's going to can for 10 minutes and then we're going to let it rest with the lid kind of you know off to the side the vent hole here is out front um, and then we're going to be able to just let it cool down and sit in there for about five minutes and then we'll be ready for blackberry syrup and i'm going to put this one now that i it's well it's still warm but i'm gonna let this cool all the way and i'll give you a taste test what yes okay and the last thing i'm going to talk about before i end the video and get the stuff out of the canning to have your resources right now we have our resources at our fingertips online it, it's you know we just click a link and we go to whatever we want or we google you know uh i need to know how to make this and it's right there or how to preserve it literally i still say you should have paper hard copies of whatever you are planning to do you don't do it every day you need a reminder to make sure you're safe and maybe you don't remember how to cure garlic or you don't remember how to cure onions or potatoes or whatever if you've got a book that guides you through that no matter whether you have the internet or not you are golden so i say part of our preparedness pantry is to have documentation at our fingertips to look up anything we need so i have plenty of canning books i've got gardening books i've got all kinds of information at my fingertips in a hard copy form so that's part of my preparedness pantry do you have all that stuff let me know down below all right i'm going to bring you back when i take the syrup out of the canner and we'll wind this up and thank you so much for indulging me for today's video i appreciate you okay guys we are done this canning session is over i think we've covered everything i wanted to cover in the pantry preparedness for 30 days of preparedness and these are things that I'll be looking at and this water bath can for 10 full minutes so it's done it's sat here in the canner for a good five minutes with the lid kind of letting all the steam out and now we're um, try not to tip your jars they haven't sealed yet if they haven't sealed then you could actually have product go under the lid if that makes sense and but i have five pints of this delicious syrup mm -mm. i'm gonna give you a taste test so this it didn't make quite six and what i'll do next time is i'll add a few extra berries if i want syrup so i just wanted to show you the consistency it's definitely syrup and this yeah it's beautiful now there are a few seeds but not not enough to worry about this is how i do my jam and jelly too because blackberries have a lot of seeds but 
You saw how much sugar for eight cups. We only used a cup of, a cup of sugar. A cup and a half, sorry. Mm. So you can absolutely taste the blackberries. There's still a tart feel to it. This is going to be wonderful on waffles. Mm. Or French toast. I think, I think we voted French toast already. So that's the end of my first pantry preparedness video for this month. I'll be back here on the 22nd. And if I come up with something different, I will absolutely. So let me know in the comment section how you feel about me doing a preparedness video on a recipe using stuff that I have that I keep in my food storage and in my, you know, immediate pantry kind of thing. I've got a delicious recipe that I put together the other night and it was so good using stuff that I've preserved as well as stuff that I have put back. Actually, it was. Anyway, let me know if you'd like to see the recipe and Maybe that's what I'll do for my second video. All right, guys, I'm going to say goodnight for now, and I'll see you next time for a delicious recipe. Mm -hmm. Bye. So I hope this inspires you to put back some things and make your prepared pantry a safe and healthy one.